So this video is uh, looking at the respiratory system and in this case we've got a section of lung and in the centre here we can see one of the airways and this is a bronchus and if we have a look a little bit closer detail at the bronchus we can see the airway here we can see the respiratory epithelium lining the bronchus we can see the lamina propria underneath the epithelium we can see some smooth muscle here. The smooth muscle is there to maintain the airway. And because it's still quite a large airway, we also have some plates of cartilage here and here and over here. And so in the trachea, there is no smooth muscle. It's all cartilage and C-shaped rings of cartilage. In the bronchi, it's just plates of cartilage and some smooth muscle. And as we move down to smaller airways like bronchioles, then you actually have no cartilage at all and the whole structural integrity uh, or the patency of the airway is maintained by the smooth muscle. Let's look in a little bit more detail at the respiratory epithelium. So here we have the respiratory epithelium. In this case, the, in this staining preparation, the nuclei are black. So here we have the black nuclei. On the surface of these columnar cells you can see small projections. These are the cilia. You can also see some cells are big and round and these are filled with mucus. So between the mucus coming from these goblet shaped cells, aptly named goblet cells, mucus is expelled onto the surface. The cilia trap the pathogens and particulate matter and then rhythmically waft to move the mucus up towards the mouth uh, as the mucociliary escalator and that is what allows the lower lung to remain clean. Different cell types in here, uh, some of them of which reach the um, luminal surface and some which don't mean that there's quite a disorganized arrangement of nuclei here in the respiratory epithelium giving it a pseudo stratified appearance so it looks like there might be more than one cell layer here but there isn't it's just a disorganization this is where you would find the basement membrane and then the lamina propria is beneath which structurally and nutritionally maintains and um, supports the epithelium then we have the smooth muscle here and if I just go back out a little bit we can see that in places the epithelium invaginates down into the lamina propria and submucosa as glands and here again you can see another gland those glands are composed of cells that produce both um, viscous mucus like um, secretions and also quite watery secretions as well so a mixture of activity of these glands produces all the different kinds of secretions that you get in your airways. If we go back out again and just have a look at the overview that's your bronchus and then there are several bronchioles here so let's just zoom in quickly on one of those. So in this, exactly the same, the, the epithelium is a little bit shorter now, it's still got this pseudo stratified appearance. Um, the cilia are beginning to disappear, not, not very evident cilia here. Uh, there is no um, cartilage, just smooth muscle. And so really these are quite small airways. There are even smaller um, respiratory bronchioles as well here. But I'm going to just move on now and have a look at the lung tissue itself. So most of this that we can see is just white space. These are the air spaces, our alveoli. And then there's very little tissue uh, between. So the alveoli are lined with two types of cells called pneumocytes. Uh, the type 1 pneumocytes are flat squamous cells that line the alveoli. And here are two nuclei of type 1 pneumocytes here. Uh, the other type of pneumocyte, the type 2 pneumocyte, is a bigger, fatter cell that protrudes further in. Uh, on electron microscopy you would see that its cytoplasm is filled with big granules 
um, of material that is secreted by the type 2 pneumocyte and that is surfactant. And the surfactant comes from, from these cells and bathes the alveolus in a very thin film of surfactant which is a very low friction fluid. As the alveoli expand and deflate the very small thin squamous cells are protected. Why are these cells small and thin and squamous? Well this is because we want a very thin cell in order to be able to diffuse uh, the gases and exchange the gases from the air in the alveolus to the blood in the capillaries. And in this particular preparation the red blood cells appear yellow. So all of these circles here, this one and this one and this one, these are all capillaries filled with red blood cells. So this is a nice bit showing a type 1 pneumocyte, the cytoplasm of which will be about here, and the actual um, um, cytoplasm of the endothelial cell, which is very thin. So this is the air-blood interface where diffusion across the alveolar wall happens. Now the lung has also got a small amount of connective tissue in between here, holding all this together, a fine meshwork, and that's called the interstitium of the lung. It's quite hard to detect here, but there's some here. And where the lung um, becomes fibrosed, it's this area that becomes fibrosed. It becomes full of tough collagen and means that the expansion of the alveoli is compromised and the patient uh, experiences difficulty breathing and a reduced total volume of air into the lungs. Normally this is just filled with some small elastin fibres allowing the expansion and deflation of the alveoli very easily but if it becomes hard and tough and fibrosed then the expansion of the alveoli becomes increasingly difficult. So in this particular video we've looked at the air spaces, the alveoli, we've looked at the cells that line those, we've looked at the diffusion of gases across uh, from the air to the blood, we've also looked at some of the smaller airways, bronchioles with no cartilage and smooth muscle in the walls and bronchi that have some smooth muscle supported also by plates of cartilage.